Hello folks, it's Amy B. We're at the Center Stage, Nashville, Tennessee. We're fixing to rock the night away with Max Carlisle and his boys from LA. And also Michael Lee, vocalist, happens to be a Nashville Shelbyville boy here in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We'll learn a little bit about them and talk about their music tonight. Hi guys. Hey. Hello. Welcome to Nash How you Vegas. Doing? Thank you very much. We just flew in last night. How about it? Yeah. So, so far so good? been great. Yes. Awesome, yeah, awesome. You ready to rock tonight? We are yep. ready. I am so ready. I am so ready. I've been waiting for this show for months and here it is. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it, you know. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you guys, sure. okay? Full Metal Thunder mm -hmm. was released six months ago. Yeah, about okay? that. Okay, and tell me about who here on the couch was part of the process of the recording process of that. Yeah, well, the recording process was actually took quite a bit of time. And uh, of course, Michael sings all the, all the vocals on it. Correct. And um, Dave has been in the band for a very long time. Um, yeah, yeah, since yeah, about a year. About that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. something like that. But yeah, actually, the, the demos and the very early versions of the songs were done when there was a, a, the, a former drummer in the band. Right. And also, kind of a similar situation uh, with Nick, who's the bassist in the band now. Uh, he actually came into the band kind of just as the recordings were being finished and it was about to be released. Right, so there was a guy named right. uh, Frank Mullis who played bass on the recordings. Gotcha, and gotcha. And then he, uh, for complicated reasons, he sure. decided to leave the band. It's only rock and know. roll folks, this is what happens, yeah. you know. But so, so basically, this is your live band right here. Exactly. You know, I know that yeah. Michael, uh, some time ago, went out to California to play the whiskey with you guys. Yes. Yeah. And now you guys, which I suggested, as soon as I heard that, I said, you got to bring them here. Yep. And he did it. Yeah, absolutely. he's like that. Yeah, yeah. he's like yeah. that. Yeah, he's, he 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 can do those so things. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. FedEx, so it took a long time. It took yeah. a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had a very nice plane right here. I must add. Well, yeah. very good, we very good. It's actually quicker than the van ride. <laughs> the, the, the van yeah. ride to the club. Oh my gosh, isn't that usually the way? You should have uh, flown into Delta here and just dropped you guys off at the really? club. Right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. So tell me a little bit about Full Metal Thunder. Okay. Okay. Is this uh, your first, second, third uh, recording EP? This is actually my fourth release. Nice. Yeah, my fourth solo release. And uh, it's the second of two EPs mm -hmm. that I did in the space of about a year. And it was, uh, those two EPs were originally going to be one album, uh -huh. but it was with two different singers. And as right. I kept working on them, I, I kind of felt like the two voices didn't really fit together. They didn't really belong on the same album, so sure. I split them up. I released uh, one called Visions of Victory first, about six months prior. Right. And then Full Metal Thunder with Michael uh, right. after that. Right. Yeah. Now tell me, now, it's interesting how being that Michael is all the way in Nashville area, yeah. you are all the way on the other coast, that you two came together. Tell, tell everybody a little bit about that, because I know about it, but they don't know about it. So I think it's very interesting how that kind yeah. of was like a meant to be meeting, so to speak. Yeah, well, it was interesting because that was yeah. Right, a few years ago, it really. Was, uh, when I was uh, with Angels of Babylon. Yeah. Yes. At, the, at the Whiskey of Go Go. Yes. 2009? Uh, something like that. We were, we were both, uh, he and I were both playing in, in different bands. Right. He was in, in Angels of Babylon. Angels of Babylon. I was yeah. playing in uh, Death Riders. Uh -huh. And actually, Dave also was playing in Death Riders. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So you, so you heard Michael sing and yeah, you guys we heard met, him sing and, and we then... shared the same dressing room also. Yeah, we were just talk, yeah. talking backstage yeah. and that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, lo I love yeah. those kind of stories because, you know, people think, you know, uh, that bands, they have to live like in the same town to make oh, a yeah. connection and all that kind of thing or, you know, how would that work? But, you know, you sent the music to Michael here yeah. in Nashville. He recorded the vocals and then, you know, sent the stuff back and, mm -hmm. and, and I've heard the music and it's, it, it rocks. So, <laughs> you know, and, you. and for you guys to do it that way, mm -hmm. you know, is, uh, is is a very cool way to do it. So you can do it so many different ways. You know, you get, yeah. uh, everybody in the studio at the same time is old school, you know, yeah. lay down that one track and overdub. And yeah. then now today with all this technology that we've got going on, then you guys can do it like this. So it, it's sure. like it has progressed the technology of everything. Because back in the day, we probably never were really thought of doing something like that. Yeah, you know? that's true. Or certainly would have been more complicated. Well, it was, uh, yes. It's so yeah. Yeah, it, it was yeah. by chance anyway. I mean, because Max, Max stuck around and heard Angels of Babylon. We actually switched spots that night and went on. That's right. Oh. Went on before us. Yeah. yeah. We went on after. So Max uh, stuck around and listened to one or two or three songs. I don't know how many songs of the set. Yeah. And after that, he asked me if I, you know, if I'd be interested in singing on one of his songs, in which I 
I was, I was privileged to, you know. I yeah. Said, yeah. And then it just took place. He liked he liked the one song I did, and then yep. before I know it, we we were working on the whole EP. The whole yeah. thing, and yeah. I'm so glad you did. Yeah. It, it was it's 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 a great marriage of talent and, and everything. It it because of the distance, it, it did take quite a while sure. to work everything yeah. out. But, yeah, but you would never yeah. know it. But yeah, no, in the it. end, you, I think you it just came never out know great. it. You know. Not for yeah. computers. Yeah. Yes, I know, all right, the technology of the world with rock and roll, I'm telling you. So uh, tell me about some future shows that are coming up. Tonight we're going to mm -hmm. be really, you know, lucky to hear them here at the center stage. And uh, But you've got some future uh, touring, some shows coming up. Yeah, well, we're, we're, working, we're working on, on a booking. lot of stuff. Yeah, we definitely want to promote the EP as much as possible. Absolutely. And it's, it's been getting some really good press, and so I'm trying to take yes. advantage of that. And you have a very cool video Absolutely. on YouTube already, which you can go and check that out. It is it's really great. It's when Michael was in California. California with them and they recorded that and it really is very it's very yeah. good yeah for the Tons title of hits track. on it too you guys have like gone viral with that thing it's yeah like craziness yeah it's yeah, got a great response yeah yeah, yeah. 200,000 this month uh, last yeah. month yeah yeah, yeah 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 so let's kick that up a couple 200,000 more <laughs> notches after this interview for sure go to your YouTube so and tell me now what I saw when I read your bio which I was very impressed mm -hmm. with you you've got also another project this guy plays like crazy uh, with Hillian yeah. Okay, and you're working with a really cool producer. Yeah, no, it's very um, impressed by his record. Hellion is is a band that's been around for a very long time since right. the early '80s, and but the band has kind of been on a hiatus for several years. It hasn't really been very active lately, and so the lead singer Anne Boleyn wanted to, re you know, really kick the band up again and and release a new album and start touring. But she didn't really have a lineup right. because most of the guys who had been in the band previously are. They would just kind of gotten out of the business, you know, or right. they kind of got onto other things. Um, so she had to put a new lineup together, and uh, someone that she basically we had a mutual friend who yeah. uh, found out that she was looking for a guitarist based in L.A. He was familiar with my material, and I've worked with female vocalists before and, yeah. and that kind of thing. So uh, it was just a good match, and awesome. So I got hooked the up producer. with that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the the lineup of the band is amazing, and and the everybody who's working on the album yeah, is amazing too. Yeah. The the producer Ken Scott, who is a legendary uh, British producer. I mean, he's worked on, you know, David Bowie, yeah, and Pink drop Floyd, those yeah, names, baby, Pink Floyd, yeah. and the Rolling Stones. Yes. I mean, so many, so many it's things. It's gonna be you know? amazing, very good. Yeah, and it's been great uh, to work with him because. Sometimes you go into a situation like that and people kind of get hyped up and they don't quite live up to the expectations. Yes. But he totally yeah. delivered. You know, awesome. he totally lived up to yeah, it. Well, yeah, well, I would think he probably would. Yeah, yeah and, yeah. and the yeah. Lest, uh, rest yeah. of the, the lineup is, is really uh, impressive as well. Uh, Simon Wright is on drums. He played with UFO and ACDC. Yes. Oh, and, nice. Uh, Queen, yeah, Dio. Dio. Oh, my, Dio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Bjorn England is the bass player. He's uh -huh. played with Ingve Malmsteen and oh, some great, wow. great guys. Yeah. When they did, was he with Rob Halford also? Uh, no, I don't yeah. believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, very impressive. Uli John Roth, yes. Yeah. Guys, well, so. speaking of all that, let's talk about influences. Max, what are your influences? What, what got you to being that screaming guitar player that you are? You know, I, I think a lot of what are considered today to be the classic shredder guys, yes. you know, guys like Steve Vai. Like when I, yes. I saw the movie Crossroads. Oh, yeah. Right? And, and, uh, I forget how old I was, but you know, there's the guitar duel at the end of the movie, yeah. right? And where Steve Vai is the, ba the, the bad devil. guy. Yeah. yeah, and I, I love that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, guys like Steve Vai, you know, uh, Ingve Malmsteen. There's a guy named Chris Pelletieri who's an incredible, you know, technical master. Right. And um, uh, and then there's other influences, guys who influenced me as a writer, like uh, K.K. Downing and Glenn yes. Tipton from Judas Priest. Oh and, yeah. Love yeah, guys Judas like Priest. that. Awesome. Yeah. And for you, Dave? Yeah. As far as drums go? Uh, actually, I always had a knack for playing drums. Ever since I was a little kid, my yeah. mom and dad had the cooking uh, utensils out. I just beat the daylight. The good old pots and pans thing. Yeah, yeah. That, and then the kid across the street, his name is Leroy Knowles, had a drum set, and he was probably one of my earliest influences. But uh, Very my cool. life really changed when. Uh, so I saw Tommy Aldridge with oh, Ozzy yeah. Osbourne on the Speak of the Devil oh, tour, yeah. and there's Tommy sitting on top of the stage, this, this huge altar of a stage with two bass drums, and yeah. it just 
That just changed my it's life. It's like, that's what I'm going to be. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, been... And it happens that way. It, yeah. 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 yeah that's, it happened uh, for me as a singer, okay. you know, songwriter. When I was just a kid, remember uh, Midnight Special, the Rolling Stones, mm. oh, yeah. uh, Mick Jagger was singing uh, Dance with the Devil, mm. and the video. And that's before videos were big, even before MTV. We're talking about back in the like 70s or sure. yeah, early 70s, like 72. And I was, I just watched and I just went, I want to be a singer. I want to mm -hmm. do that, you know. It's just like that that moment, that clarity, that just kind of like, you know, it's just like that magical moment, you know. Mm -hmm. I could, I dig that. I really dig that. Seventy two. You were what, like minus five years? I old was, I was like <laughs> five. <laughs> He's being very kind. And Michael, I know drummer, singer songwriter, guitar, well, uh, guitar. Yeah, if you, if you got me started, I guess uh, you could have took what Dave said and pretty much just copied the first uh, page off his. Because I, I, when I grew up as a drummer also, I was into Tommy Aldrich and once I saw him play, but oh, actually yeah. I saw him before Dave got a chance to see him, that yeah. was when he played with Black Oak, Arkansas. We were, yes. talking, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah good old Black Oak, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And uh, which Jim Dandy, he's still out playing. Rocking. Yeah, he, he is. just rocked the whiskey last month. Yeah. And, and uh, he got about four or five members out of my band. and. Uh, <laughs> he did, he stole them. Yeah. Didn't Biff go with him? Biff Bingham yeah. went with yeah. him, I remember? Yeah, yeah. he stole three or four guys out there. Yeah, <laughs> that's Snake, I tell you. Yeah. yeah, wherever you are, Jim Dandy, we're going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just uh, as a songwriter, I, I started playing drums, and then you, you can't really be much of a songwriter just as a drummer. So, you know, I, so I started picking up classical guitar and piano a little bit. Uh, just to start doing some songwriting, and which, which that got me on the roll of, of where I could, you know, have the rhythm section and and do all the writing also at the same time. So that's that's what helped me get started, you know, into the area yeah. of being a singer songwriter. Awesome. And, uh, and I, which I played drums also doing that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. But uh, then they said, uh, come to play with this band in Nashville in 1985 or '86, and. Uh, I said, well, where, when do I bring my drums and where do I bring them to? They said, we don't want you to bring your drums. Bring your voice. And I said, why? And I said, I got to have my drums. And they said, we just want you to be a lead singer. I thought yeah. about it. I had a real big kit back then. And, and uh, one thing that made me go was I, I wouldn't have to set up my drum kit. So oh, nice. I would walk in and put the yeah. microphone, set my Easy stand peasy, up, babe. And I'm here. That's right. But that's the best part. We don't even need roadies. But that's stuff. the best yeah. part is setting up the drums. Oh, the only yeah. thing better <laughs> is go. tearing them down. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. And you do both of them well, all of those well. It's and awesome. last but not least, the bass player. Nick, tell me about yourself. How much time do you have? This <laughs> 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 Okay, everybody take a quick break. It's going to be a long yeah. one. Um, but no, just quickly, uh, yeah, everyone here has mentioned some fantastic bands. Uh, my influences I cover the entire spectrum music from Sting to Megadeth and everything nice. in between. So, nice. Because nice. I think it's good to be well-rounded, so I listen to a little bit of everything. But, um, you know, to just start picking decades from the 80s. I loved the big hair stuff, so Skid Row, sure. Doc and Dio. I know, yeah, I know. Stuff. I miss amazingly those days. Great, I amazingly do. Amazingly great Whitesnake, you know, yeah, amazingly White great Snake, music. Yeah. Um, from the 90s, um, honestly, I didn't listen to a lot from that decade. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, there were some great artists, but I just I didn't listen to a lot of them from there. Uh, today I listen to a lot more modern things. Um, I listen to a lot of symphonic stuff, so like Camelot and Nightwish. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I listen to some of the younger stuff like Avenged Sevenfold, Black Veil sure. Brides. Um, I, I go back even earlier to Pink Floyd. So again, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I am all over the map. Nice, um, very good. It, well, Dave's going to skip yeah. me a I'm just not a Pink Floyd fan, but that's right. okay. That's why I said, um, there you go. Know. I'm nothing against them. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> them. The uh, are start, you guys start fight start later after the no. show? We need you to yeah. play tonight. The bad part about being a bass player is I'm in front of them, so you can throw sticks There you go, there you go. You might get hit upside the head tonight. It doesn't happen that often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not easily. Folks, we are so excited to watch these guys tonight. I want you to stick around because they'll be coming up after the interview. Yeah. And we'll be able to find the music. We're going to roll that in the credits, CD Baby, iTunes, YouTube, and on and on and on. So you can go and pick up their great music and support these guys. So stick around because they're coming up next. Rock on. Sound your destiny Oh, the metal thunder Ruling the darkness and light oh. It's a wrap!